This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Once upon a time, in a pre-COVID world, there lived a watch called the SNKL23. This charming creation was beloved across the land with people far and wide singing its praises. Never had there been a fairer entry-level watch. But one day, the clouds gathered and the wind picked up. Something was afoot. The watch nerds looked on as the little Seiko started disappearing from store shelves until one day it vanished completely. Throughout the kingdom, there was much chatter what had happened to the famous budget beater? Magic mirror on the wall. Who's the most foolish watch brand of all? Easy. It's Seiko, mate. Ah, huh, guess that makes sense. To cut my stupid tail short, it seemed that Seiko had discontinued arguably their most popular low-cost watch. This SNKL23 had been nearly impossible to find for years after selling out internationally thanks to the hype built up by a Hadinki article and a string of subsequent YouTube videos. Seiko never confirmed exactly when or why this happened, so we were left guessing. I was pretty convinced that we would never be seeing this again, and those who had missed the boat the first time would be stuck paying extreme premiums for used models on eBay. That was until a couple of months ago. Gradually, I started seeing these pop back up across a variety of online vendors without the price gouging. It appears these are back available again. And this brings about two questions. Firstly, should you grab one while they are available? And secondly, will this watch be sticking around for any length of time? While I can't give you a conclusive answer to the latter, I might be able to help you a bit with the former. I'll run you through why this watch is generally thought of so highly its pros, cons, and whether I think it's worth your money today. I'll also be showcasing a couple of great alternatives in case it does disappear once more. With these heritage brands, you really have no idea what's gonna happen next. I'll link all of the watches featured in the video description. Thanks to Amazon for sending this one in for a review. The pros begin with the dimensions. With a 37.8 millimeter diameter, 10.6 millimeter thickness, and 45.3 millimeter lug to lug, it's in that Goldilocks zone of sizing for most wrists. If you have a particularly large wrist, this will look on the small side, but if you don't, it'll look classy without getting in the way. Structurally, you also get a visually appealing shape. This is one of the very best Seiko 5 cases, with a sleek and versatile design that smoothly encompasses the lugs and a fairly curved side profile that ensures a comfortable fit. Other models that feature flatter cases often result in the case rear protruding unnecessarily, which can leave you with large gaps when on wrist. A look that isn't quite so graceful. Over the last year, we've been reviewing watches like these over on our blog, which I created using Squarespace. Initially, we chose Squarespace because of a few key features. Firstly, it's got the powerful blogging tools that we were looking for to share our findings with you. It easily allows us to categorize and schedule posts so that they coincide with these videos, meaning that you can choose to read or watch depending on your situation. We can even embed our videos directly into the platform for easy access. The intuitive software also allows us to keep tabs on our visits and page views over time, along with providing us with insights about our top traffic sources to ensure that we keep creating content that you want to engage with. Importantly for us, it's very easy to make the site look amazing. This ensures that our ever-improving product shots are complemented by the rest of the page. I feel like I've got to do some of these watches justice. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Ben's Watch Club to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks to them for supporting the channel. Unlike some alternative options, the brushing is also attractive, with brushed flanks transitioning upwards to a polished beveled section, and finally the glossy bezel atop. It looks fantastic though, it's clearly not being completed with the same precision of more expensive Seiko offerings, such as the Saab lineup for instance, which also feature a similar design. As with all Seiko 5s, this is made of 360 nl stainless steel and weighs just enough to feel like a quality product for its size. 
There's also a very small crown on this model, which is tricky to use, but tucks away beautifully to give an incredibly symmetrical overall look that's really not found in most wristwatches. Even the alternatives I'm mentioning later, they don't quite have a crown that tucks in so neatly. To the rear, we have a display notched case back, which provides a low 30 meters of water resistance. This is one of my few frustrations with the Seiko 5 range, as a slight increase would certainly help with my peace of mind. Despite this, it does allow you to see the automatic movement within. Admittedly, the 7S26 is far from the most visually appealing option, but its presence here is still appreciated given the remarkably low retail price. You get the lovely sight of a second hand beating away for less money than you might think, and without the presence of a battery too. Interestingly, this movement has been discontinued for years, making me doubtful of this and other models' long-term futures. Unless, of course, Seiko decided to upgrade the watch, which seems unlikely at this point. At a price point where simple one tick per second quartz movements are the norm, this is still really cool. It's not the most accurate option out there, but it makes for a great first automatic watch. And this value proposition is only consistently beaten by random Chinese micro brands, whom seem to make trade-offs elsewhere. As good as the inclusion of the mechanical movement is, the main selling point of this watch has to be that dial. Several aspects of it combine to create a timeless, elegant aesthetic that exceeds the price tag. To me, it's this which has solidified this watch's reputation. Overall, the clean look is not too dissimilar to some Grand Seiko models, with an alpha handset and a selection of slim hour markers that give a rather premium and slightly dressy appearance. While both of those look great, I think it's a couple of other factors that make this watch stand out from some of the competition. Firstly, I have a very elegant black date window, which not only blends in perfectly with the dark dial, but also features a two-tone white and silver surround that looks classy and neat. Most affordable watches, including other Seikos, don't have this attention to detail, often featuring clashing date wheels, which subtract from the overall coherence. Secondly, this watch has two faces. No, I'm not referring to the magic mirror scene from the start of this video, or the fact that I look like the guy from Split, apparently. In this case, the two personalities of this watch are revealed in different lighting conditions. When out of direct light, the SNKL23 appears to have an understated plain appearance. However, when illuminated, you start to see the subtle grey striped chapter ring emerge. This gives the watch more of a unique identity compared to many Seiko 5 models and highlights a surprising level of thoughtfulness that has gone into this design. As is typical with these watches, you also get the applied pair of logos alongside some mild luminescence which may come in handy. The flat mineral crystal over the dial is the standard at this price point and it'll give you some limited scratch protection, whilst the main letdown of the overall package is the bracelet. As you may have guessed, the majority of the money has gone into the main body of the watch as this default bracelet is the typical lightweight folded link rubbish that you usually get with these low end Seikos. This is the main thing that reveals that this is a uh, lower end watch. It looks okay, but you'll probably want to switch it for something higher quality so it doesn't let the rest of the watch down. While it looks great in a variety of options, I think it suits a mesh bracelet the best. It dresses the watch down slightly, making it wearable in most situations. And it certainly pinches less hairs. It's no surprise that this watch is so popular. Apart from the band, it both looks and feels like a more expensive watch, and there really aren't many better alternatives for such a small chunk of change. However, what if this watch disappears once more? Or perhaps you don't think this is quite the watch that you were looking for? Well, I found two alternatives that give a similar look with some slight cosmetic differences. First up is the SNK361. This is a gorgeous looking watch that not only looks akin to the SNKL23, but also bears a striking resemblance to the Rolex Oyster Perpetual. The main differences between this and the SNKL23 are the case and hands. This one has larger shoulders and baton hands which give it more of that Rolex styling. It features the same movement and date window found in the SNKL23, but features an array of fives printed across the dial, rather than going for any sort of pattern chapter ring. This is subtle and looks much better than I expected given the shockingly bad stock images. It's a worthwhile alternative for sure. If you're a big fan of Dauphine hands though, you may want to check out the SNKL45. This one's a blend of the previous two watches as it also comes housed in the same case as that previous alternative. Often cited as the mini Grand Seiko, this Seiko 5 features a similar handset to the SNKL23, but with a more plain dial and slightly elongated applied indices. 
A red second hand gives this watch a pop of colour to separate it from its contemporaries. And once more, it features the same automatic movement. All three of these watches are produced in a variety of colours, so if you don't want to go for the more versatile and plain black, there are other options. The link below so you can grab one before Seiko decide to pull the plug again. In fact, I'll be doing more of a deep dive comparison between these three in an upcoming video. Make sure you subscribe for that one. I'll see you next time. Only a fool wouldn't subscribe to Ben's Watch Club. Are you a fool? I thought not.